Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Deskside Chats podcast presented by the City of Northport. My name is Madison Hyde, and I'm the Deputy Communications Manager for the City. Everyone has a story, right? In this podcast, I'll be learning the stories of our employees right here in the city of Northport. Join me as I chat with folks from all walks of life, across departments and divisions. We're building a community of unity. Get to know the staff working for you every day. Now let's lean in and chat desk side. This week, we're chatting with Diane Kiernan, Customer Account Specialist 3 at Public Works. Is it Wilkes Bar or Wilkes Barre, Pennsylvania? We talk about the nuances of the name of her hometown, her love of Harry Potter, and her 15-year tenure with the Public Works Department. We hope you enjoy. Hey, Diane. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Great. That's great to hear. I'm so glad you're able to join us today so we get to learn a little bit more about you. Well, thanks for having me. It's going to be super fun. So let's start what we do. It's like uh, Sound of Music style. Let's start from the very beginning. Okay. Um, Tell me about... Where you were born, where you were raised. So I was born in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. My father's background is German, and my mother's side is Lithuanian, Russian, Irish. We got a whole mix of things in there. You know, one of the funny things about Wilkes-Barre is that there's a couple different ways to say it. It depends on who you ask. So there's Wilkes-Barre, there's Wilkes-Barre, there's mm-hmm. wilkes Bar. I find that I use it in different – it just depends on how I'm talking. But oh. sometimes I say it even different. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So what weird. would be like, what would make it change, I guess? Do you know or just kind of happens naturally as you're talking? If I said, like I've said, I'm from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Wilkes-Barre. Yeah. But if you said what's in, you know, I would say, well, in Wilkes-Barre, we used to do this. So Got it. Yeah, it's just weird. But if you asked people on the street in Pennsylvania, you would hear it at least three different ways. Oh. But not probably the way that I mispronounced it before we started re- recording as Wilkes Barre. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know who I thought I was going with that pronunciation. Well, actually, maybe one of the things that I learned was that our city was named after two historians, John Wilkes and Isaac Wilkes Barry, and he was from Dublin. I don't oh. know if that's where the Barry comes in, or but. I mean, I guess I should have maybe gleaned that from when you said from Ireland, it probably wouldn't be Barre. It would have, right, right. I maybe should have <laughs> seen that. But. but, yeah, I mean, it's something you don't know. It's just a little silly fun fact about Wilkes-Barre. Yes. Yeah, that's because, like, when you say it out loud and not see it written out, I just thought it was, like, Wilkes, you know, B-U-R-Y, like mm-hmm. Wilkes-Barre. Right, right. It's interesting. Very interesting name. And you said, and I know that it's like one of the few hyphenated cities, right? Yep. Or, yep. Um, okay. There's other hyphenated cities, but this one is original because of it was named after the two historians. Other ones have combined cities, sure. and that's how they got their hyphenated. So it's almost like one of the main ones that were originated that sure, way. Sure, right. That's interesting. And then speaking of historians, I know you lived in a house that was it had a historical monument on it, right? Yes. Was that still in the same town, or was that somewhere that else? That was Exeter, Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, which is where the battle was. Gotcha. And so, yeah, so tell, tell us it more about it. It was just weird. Like, when we bought the house, that monument came with the property. Like, it had to be there. We couldn't take it down. Not that we would, but right. we had it's like no— like protected or something. Right. We had yeah. no option. But it was because of a battle that was won. So it's kind of like living on a burial ground because a lot of people got burned— they they had this whole... So, like, what was it? What was the... Oh, it was called the Battle of Fort Winter Moot. Okay. Yeah. Which okay. I have to think back now to my history. <laughs> okay, so... Yes, yes. So, from what I'm to understand, a major butler um, ordered the Fort Winter Moot to be burned to the ground. So, it was the fort that was already there. He ordered it to be burned... To the ground to win the battle, okay, okay against okay. the Americans. Yes. And I guess what happened is he had his guys all laying in the ground and, you know, sneaking, and as he was burning it, and they were, the other team, I'm going to call it, <laughs> sure. was coming out, Yeah. Um, then they attacked and they won. So, but it was mm. weird because people were scalped, like, I don't know, I think it was like 227 men were scalped and some were taken as prisoners, and it's just a weird thought after we bought the house and learned that. Kind of like a burial ground. Right. It, 
without being, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, a little weird. That's like Although you're I, living in a scary movie. Exactly. But the house never had anything wonky or funky that was be like my that. Next no question. Amityville stuff. Oh, dang it. <laughs> but yeah, if you were to look up my address or look up Fort Wintermoot, right in the back of that monument is my little house. Oh. Well, where it was, at least. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. That's so... It. I never knew of that, that that could happen. That I know, me either. it would be on either. someone's it, property. Yeah, me too. You'd think it'd be like a line, you right. know, that like carved it out. Something. Even, no, it's an know? actual stand-up monument. Like, huh. yeah, you should look it up. Just yeah. to... It's weird. Yeah, that's so weird. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to... And everybody else listening, go look it up. I mean, yeah, go, yeah. Go, Fort go, go see Diane's old house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's very interesting. So then, so you were living there, and then when... When did you decide to move to Florida? What got you here? So I've always wanted to live in Florida. It was like a childhood thing. Me and my two best friends, like, oh, we're going to live where it's nice and warm. Yeah. Um, what actually happened was my parents were being part-timers. They were doing the Pennsylvania, the Florida, back and forth. And one year they had decided that was it. They weren't traveling anymore. And I happened that same year to have the opportunity through where I worked to come to Florida to be an office manager. And wow, okay. it was just, it was one of those things where the office, the manager mm-hmm. here, every time he'd come in, because I worked in the IT department, every yeah. time I came, he came in, I'd say, someday, I'm going to live in Florida. And I had said it one time, joking, and he was like, are you serious? He's like, because I need an office manager. He said, the catch is you have to be here in 30 days. And wow. I was like, wow, right. And yeah. my he even offered my husband at the time a job mm-hmm. in the warehouse. He's like... You can just so we packed up the house, sold it, and in 30 days we moved. Holy and Kate, cow. we had a little trailer we pulled on the back. Yep. And my mother in law, she came with us. I was going to say, was she, <laughs> was she being pulled on the back? She, 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 she came along we're for we're the back. ride, um, which was very helpful because yeah. with schools and daycares and stuff, we had a lot. But because my mom and dad were already here, they found us an apartment, which was scary. It was like 500 square feet. So I moved from a house to holy moly. Yeah. I was like, I don't know if I could do this, right. you know. But Big it worked out fine. Yeah, yeah, I only stayed at that job for a year, not okay. really for me. Okay. Then I left there. I went to a steamship company, and then the steamship company actually branched out to the local ports. Okay. And so I was either move again mm-hmm. or just get a new job. So my best friend in that time frame had moved here because of the hurricane. Her husband did construction. So he oh, moved here. So she yeah, said, for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, she said, come to Port Charlotte. She said, it's so much more like home. Because I was living in Tampa, Brandon, Tampa area. Okay, okay. That's was and, my question. Um, yeah. yeah. And so I was like, okay. So I basically just stayed at the job until, you know, it was just done. You know, right. the last of the last. And then I moved here. And then well, we moved, yeah, we moved to Port Charlotte first. So oh, Very cool. Yeah. So now let's talk about how you ended up here with us at the city of Northport. How'd you end up here? Oh, so I had to, obviously, when I moved to Port Charlotte, I had no job. Mm-hmm. First time in my life, I was like, you know what? I'm taking full advantage of six months <laughs> on being laid off because that's what it was. Okay. And then so I went to a agency where they place you, you know, and sure. I got an offer over in Public Works. And so uh, it was kind of funny because I enjoyed it. I loved it. But I needed insurance because, again, I was through the agency. Mm-hmm. And so I found another job working at Willow Creek, the apartments here in Northport. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I had asked the ladies, I remember it was uh, Lynn Banish. I'm like, listen, if you could somehow guarantee me that I can get a job here, mm-hmm. I can stay. I said, otherwise I need insurance. She's like, I just can't do it. So I left and then a job came open in public works and I had made some contacts then, and sure. I got a call from a friend that said, hey, why don't you apply? You know, this position's open. Right. So I applied, and I've been here ever since, yeah, ever since, since 2007. Wow, okay. Yeah. So what has your, like, trajectory been like? What did you start out in, and how did you end up where you're at now? Started out in customer service, truly loved it. I mean, customer service is either for you or it's not for you. Absolutely. And apparently, I guess I have a knack for it because I never, it never overwhelmed me and never got to me Mm -hmm. and then uh, I just fell into the position that I'm in now which is account specialist one of the girls actually had left and I was covering for her she was out for a bit and then she didn't come back and I applied for that job so that's where I'm at now but I'm still in the same little group with the girls you know I just do different things and 
I guess account specialist is different because I deal with some money, more money than staff assistant. Right. So I guess they call them staff assistant instead of customer service. I but um, okay. so then what do you do in your job now then? What's I open your, what's all, your day the new, to day? all the new commercial businesses that come in here. I open their garbage account. You know, I do all the service for them, get their deliveries. I do collections. I say that lightly. <laughs> um, I'm pretty mm-hmm. good at it, surprisingly enough. But yeah, so I do that. So it's basically just servicing the businesses in Northport. Right. So. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and having like, what is that? What is that math? How, how many years then is that? 15. 15. Yeah. Oh yeah. Gosh. So I'm sure like I'm sure a lot of them know you from past things. Right. Oh, yeah. That maybe softens the I don't say softens the blow. Yeah. It's, not it's a blow, actually but, really you know. good. Like yeah. I do have a lot of good contacts that mm-hmm. I can reach out to. In fact, I just reached out to um, a bunch of new businesses for our rodeo that's coming up because yes. that is a super great opportunity for a new business to get their name out there. So, it is. I mean, of course, it's up to them mm-hmm. in the end whether they want to do it or not. But yeah, yeah so that's. That's good for I feel good doing that for them to sure. say, hey, here's this opportunity. So Yeah. And then before just real quick, before we exit work life and get into more of like the fun, not that this isn't fun. You know what I mean. You know <laughs> right, what I mean. Right. Um tell me just a little bit about the rodeo. Because I know a lot of people know about it. But like so the road like what what happens at the rodeo? So it it's supposed to be a skilled competition. That's mm-hmm. where it comes from. It's branched out all over the rodeo. Yeah. And so our drivers, some of our solid waste drivers, some of the rodeo drivers, they, you know, we kind of set them up in the middle of public works mm-hmm. and they can do skilled competitions, you know, whether they go through cones in a timely manner driving through the cones or they could pick up a ball with the I don't know all the proper names to the machines but you know and then what we do is we have we have all different ops we have this year we're going to have an obstacle course for the kids there's bounce houses we have food there but it's just it's a really fun opportunity for the residents to get out and it's a nice yeah, day. Yeah, to learn more about right. the department. Oh, they can see all the fleet trucks. They can and other fires departments there, come police in. is there. Yep, everybody. Utilities yep. is there. So it's really well-rounded yeah. to get to know, you know, your community. For sure. I know it's a super popular event. We weren't able to do it in the last few years. I mean, like COVID threw in a, a wrench. Hurricane nice. Ian threw in a, right. a wrench. So we're... The theme is back in the saddle again. So There you go. Um, so Our, makes sense. My biggest position there is... Uh, the craft room. Yes. Uh, apparently, we thought we needed a craft room on top of everything else. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so that's what I've been doing for years. It's kind of one of those committees, once you're on it, you never get off. Right. They so, just expect it. I'm but a craft room when girl. you do the craft, I know that in past years, it's always been with like recyclable or reused only, materials, right? Only reused or recycled materials. I yeah. mean, I have gone out literally with Monica and pulled plastic bottles out of people's recycle <laughs> bins from the curb. <laughs> <laughs> wash them yeah we used you know we get asked people to donate this year i actually you all may see a donation coming out for cardboard egg cartons oh that might okay. be one of my projects i what i do is i think of the project mm-hmm. get ideas off the internet and stuff right and then if i can do it they can do it sure. because my skill level is about a sixth grade <laughs> i mean i am right so that's why the cardboard cartons haven't come out yet, because I'm going to make a dump truck out of it. I'm oh. trying to make all kinds of fun. Yeah, this year I'm going to have games in the craft room, too. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I know you said it's it's usually pretty pretty busy in there, right? It's a popular spot to be at the yeah. rodeo. Yeah. 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 Because, because of you it. and all the fun crafts that you get yeah. together. One kid didn't like it too much one year. He sat down in front of me, and I said, what craft do you want to do? And he said... I don't even want to be here. And I said, well, okay then. I said, you just hang out there, buddy. <laughs> it's just, All right. yeah, it's, it's definitely a fun place to be, yes. to interact with kids, only because, like, I've had kids with scissors, and they've cut and cut and cut and cut, and they're not even doing the craft. And I'm like, hey, and they're like, my mom doesn't let me have scissors. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe we should take those right. scissors. But, um, yes. Yeah, super glue. You have to be a certain age. You're not allowed to touch super glue yeah. unless you're a certain age. Um, yeah, it's a fun time. Oh, it's definitely a fun time. Yeah, definitely. And this year, this no, it's next year. It's February third. Yeah, twenty twenty four, which also happens to be my wedding date. Fun fact. So I will not be able to make it to the rodeo, but I bet it will be awesome. Oh, you'll see plenty of pictures. I, I'm sure plenty I'll get the full. Pictures. 
full catch up on it. Yeah. So then outside of ro- now let's exit work land. So then outside of the rodeo, like tell me more about the crafts that you love to do. I know that you did some at the rodeo, but what do you like to do on your own time? No, so I do like doing crafts. I'm definitely I'm not good at it. I try. I continue to try, but mm-hmm. I just like it. I don't know. Yeah. I like making fun things. I see something on and I think I can do it. I look at it and I'm like, oh, I could totally Easy. do that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Never, ever turns out that way. Right. But I don't know. Even as a kid, I always liked the stickers and the glue and the markers. And I like to have everything organized. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, yeah. I have stickers in my drawer. I have a big pack of markers right oh, there. I am now, I'm on the same page. I did do, so both of my children recently moved out, and I took one of the spare rooms, and I turned it into a Harry Potter room, which, if you know me, I'm a little bit of a Harry Potter nerd. <laughs> yes. Um, but I made potions, and I made a wall with all the mirrors, and yeah. Right. And it was fun. I yeah. mean, for me, it was fun, and... I of course, know. yeah, and that was going to be one of my next questions. Oh. You, you did, you, no, 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 it's great. You did the transition. You nailed it. I was going to move <laughs> into, speaking of crafting, tell me about the Harry Potter room. So then Harry Potter, that just jumped in your head right away because you're just such a big fan. Right. That was, there was really no uh, other option. You had mm. to do it. So some of the specifics you said were a moving, quote, moving picture wall, which is mirrors? So, no, when the people die in Harry Potter, Mm -hmm. they are put, they they almost live through the other world. So there will be a picture of them hanging on the wall and they move and they can talk and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mayan does not move and talk. Although I did hear at Universal, you can make your own, like actually be in it. Really? Yeah. So I'm totally (gasps) going to have to look into that the next time I go. Definitely. Because that would be super cool. That would be Um, awesome. But I did like, if you know anything about it, I did a wall of Hagrid's, all his animals. Mm -hmm. You know, he always loves the animals. And then I did the, I think it's the Deathly Hallows, um, you know, the triangle with the circle and the line. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it was just fun for me. It was fun. fun. I like witchcraft. I wish I was a witch. Oh, I wish I, I could say. just wave or twitch my nose and make the house clean. Wouldn't that, oh, wouldn't that be nice? Mm-hmm. Oh right. my gosh, I wish that'd be so nice. So then, also, because you know, whenever we do these things, we always kind of we send like just to ask for a couple bullet points about you before. So then I'm kind of ready. So I know another thing on this list is dog sitting. Oh yeah. So we lost our Henry a few years ago. He was 14 year old German shepherd. Wow. Yeah. And we did not want to commit to another dog. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a cat, but she's mean and (laughs) we don't really like her, but um, yeah, she's horrible. Mean. Oh yeah. She's just not nice. Okay. But we didn't want to commit to, you know, another dog because we're both getting up there. You know, maybe we could travel someday mm-hmm, soon. Mm-hmm. And so I said, well, why don't we try this dog sitting thing? I said, this way we can love the dog, like yes. what we're missing, and give them back. Right. And it's been pretty good. I mean, I have dogs that didn't want to leave. Like their parents came to get them. The one dog was literally sitting up against my screen door. Oh, my and I was, gosh. I know. I felt so bad. No. <laughs> I know. So, I mean, we call it Camp Kiernan. So when they come to Camp Kiernan, what happens there stays there. Because a lot Understood. of people say, oh, my dog doesn't go in the furniture. Yeah. Mm. Yes, they do. Yeah, right? As soon as you turn around. But yep. we don't yell at them. We sure. let them do whatever they want. We don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but my son, his dog may be moving in with me. And so oh. my dog sitting may branch out to just... Some people want me to stay at their homes with their dogs because okay. it's familiar for them. Sure. And I don't mind doing that. I'll mm-hmm. do that, too. But, um, yeah, with my son's dog moving in, he's a pit bull. He's huh. the love of my life. I love this dog more than anything. But I don't know how other people would feel yeah, about they, it. They have so, a kind of bad rap out there. So. I know. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure how long my dog sitting days will uh-huh. be unless I go to somebody else's house. Right. But Which is also an I, option, yeah. It's a fun, it was fun to do. We yeah. actually had two dogs through the hurricane. Oh, their, really? Yeah, their moms were going on a cruise, knowing oh. the hurricane was coming. Mm-hmm. And they said, you still want to do this? And I'm like, I'll take them. If we evacuate, we'll they're yeah. going with me. Right. I'll let you know. So, yeah, we had two dogs. We were babysitting through the hurricane. Oh, my Which gosh. was kind of awesome, though, because those ladies, they were, I guess they left out of Miami. or, And they were like, what do you need? 
and mm. we we t- obviously you're uh, bread da, 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 and we right. were like please bring beer we're like we need beer yes right <laughs> they were great they brought it's essential yeah they did they were it was really nice having somebody come over because they could get everything right you know? so exactly yeah it worked out well but oh, yeah awesome. I do like yeah. dog sitting yeah. so that's so fun and then so then you were talking about Camp Kiernan, you were talking about mm-hmm. your son. So as kind of one of the last things we'll talk about, just tell me a little bit about your family, if you feel comfortable. So uh, Kevin and I uh, have a combined family. Kevin works here, too. Uh, he just finished his 36th consecutive year with the oh city. Gosh. Yeah. And so I have a daughter and a son, and then he has a daughter. And okay. so we just have a little combined family. Um, yeah. My son actually works here. Oh, my gosh. He, yep, okay. he got a job here. He works over in road and drainage. Oh, awesome. Um, you know, we had to keep it, make sure, you of know, course. we wouldn't, we don't, I don't need to interact with him ever, yeah. you know, it's right. that type of deal. But right. And then my daughter works for SCF and Kevin started a little later. His daughter's 16. Okay. So she's still in she's school. Gonna, okay. So, so she's in the house for some of the time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. She's like part time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah okay. it's, so, it's good. Oh, we all get along. Good. We that's should great. be on a reality show without a doubt. Our stuff is craziness. Yeah. But it's fun. But that, yeah, that is sometimes what makes it fun, mm-hmm. right? As, as long as it's like not all awful craziness. Oh, right? no, no, yeah. no. It's all fun. Like <laughs> okay. if someone trips and falls in the house, I mean, we're all laughing. It, then we that say, kind yeah, of then we say, are you okay? After we're cracking right. up. But, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's good. It's oh, fun times. That's awesome. I'm so glad. Okay. So the last thing we're going to do, real quick, is what I ask people at the end of every podcast. If you have an answer or not, um, there's three questions. First question, do you have a favorite movie and or a favorite one like right now or all time? Oh, so Elf. Oh, Elf. Elf is my favorite one. Oh, favorite I love as that. For right now. I thought it was going to be Harry Potter. No. Okay. Oh, no, no. Once okay. this, once November comes, Elf is on. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That is that is a classic. Great uh-huh. one. Like a, like a recent classic. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a great choice. Okay. So then. Are you if, if you're a TV watcher, do you have a current favorite or all time favorite TV show? Oh, Frasier. Frasier. Mm-hmm. Okay. I love Frasier. In fact, they're starting a new one. I've been hearing the ads yeah. for that. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Like, what's it supposed to be? A seek like a, just a continuation? I think or a so sequ- okay. because you know you, it shows him as being older. Okay. So I yeah I'm looking forward. It oh, should be coming fun. soon. I just don't know the date, but yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to oh, that. Oh great, that's awesome. Okay, and then the last one, ice cream flavor favorite. If you had to pick one right now, I hard have to, to discriminate. Go for the vanilla chocolate twist. Am I allowed to do a twist? Yes, you are allowed okay, to do a twist. Like, like the yeah. sauce served type. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's my favorite. Great choice. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> okay, well, we've come to the end here, Diane. Okay. I really appreciate you chatting with me today. Oh, okay. thank you. Thanks for having me, and congratulations on your engagement. Oh, that's thank super you. exciting. I appreciate it. Thank you. We're very excited. Thank you. Okay. So, all right, we will check in with you guys next week. Thank all you. Right. Thanks. Thank you.